Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is part four of the ultra budget bookshelf speaker review series where we're going to review all three of them at the same time and kind of compare and contrast them to each other to really give you some context and help you make a decision. If you're here, I hope you've already watched the individual reviews for each one of these speakers. I will link to them in the descriptions below and it is really important that you do that. Um, and uh, yeah, let's just get into it. So I'm going to tell you about some of the differences between them, how they compare and contrast and stuff like that. Uh, first, I just want to touch on warranties. The Mica MB42X, you got a one-year warranty. The Dayton B652 Air and the Polk T15, you get a five-year warranty. Um, outside of that, the, the major difference is the Polk T15 and the RB42, MB42X, sorry. Uh, these two are going to have five-way binding posts. The Dayton uh, B652 Air is going to have spring terminals, unfortunately. Uh, the Mica MB42X is the only one with magnetic grills. The only two have the other two have traditional style grills. Uh, the Dayton B652, woo, Dayton B652 Air is going to have a six and a half inch midwoofer. The Polk Audio T15 is going to have a five and a quarter, while the Mica has the smallest midwoofer at four inches. Uh, these two both have a 0.75 inch silk dome tweeter, while the B652 Air has a one inch AMT tweeter. So that's kind of like the main differences. Obviously, there's some slight size variations. All three of these have about the same depth, believe it or not. Um, if you could see them from the side, they're just the depth is the same on all of them. They're just different uh, height and width only. Um, obviously, the mic is being the smallest. Um, let's talk about the finishes real quick. Uh, this, this is kind of important in my opinion. So the Dayton B652 Air, it's going to have the worst finish. Out of the box, brand new, it was bubbling on the top here and here, the same spot on both speakers. I felt that was a little bit of a bummer, you know? If you're in the budget category, you most likely work very hard for your money. Every dollar counts, you know? And, and you, when you buy something, you're really expecting it to be in good condition, especially when it's brand new. This is not a used set I bought, um, so keep that in mind. Mine came damaged. The good thing is I bought these from Amazon. I can send them back, and I'm actually going to because I don't want to keep a pair of speakers that are damaged. Anyhow, I digress. The Mica uh, MB640, oh wow, I'm starting to mix them up here. MB42X, I did buy these renewed from Amazon and they do have a similarly cheap-ish feeling finish. It doesn't seem like a vinyl wrap, almost like a thin paper, if you will. Both of these are like that. Um, the Mica didn't really have any damage except on the bottom right-hand corner, it was starting to lift the finish. But again, I bought these renewed, so I felt like that was okay. But unfortunately, I don't know if that's something that would happen if you buy them new or not. The Polk T15s actually have the best finish by a long shot. This is going to be one of the benefits of buying from a major brand. Polk Audio is the biggest company in this trio here. Mike is definitely the smallest date and is probably somewhere in the middle. And Polk Audio has definitely been doing this for the longest and has the most notoriety. Um, they have the, a brand to protect. They definitely have more of a budget on these things. And they probably buy these kinds of sheets of vinyl in quite large quantities, I'm guessing. So they can afford to slap them on anything. Uh, the finish on the Polk is actually, you can feel it. It feels somewhat real. There's a texture to it. It seems much thicker and much more heavy duty. It's got good coverage. It's not lifting anywhere. It's not chipping. It's not peeling. They arrived in pristine condition. In fact, I will say as far as build quality goes, the Polk T15 probably take the cake in terms of build quality. Let's get into the sound. So starting with the high end frequencies, uh, the Mica MB42X is going to have that sharp top end sound. It's going to be the most forward, the brightest, have the largest sound stage, believe it or not. Uh, and, and, you know, the brighter speaker is going to image better typically. The Dayton B652 Air, on the other hand, is going to be the smoothest sounding. Um, it is also going to have a little bit of a smaller sound stage where it's going to stay between the speakers. The MB42X is going to extend, extend out beyond the speakers. The Polk T15 is going to be somewhere in the middle. It's not sharp, nor is it smooth. Its top end is kind of just right in the middle, but it is on the forward side of neutral. It's going to be a little bit more bright. It's going to be pushed out into the room a little bit more. In fact, all three of these speakers, the top end will push out into the room a little bit. This one doing it the most, this one the second most, and this one the third, I guess, least, you would say. Um, and now keep in mind when I refer to these speakers as bright or smooth or neutral, it's in relation to each other, right? Um, I don't know if I would consider any of these speakers actually like smooth or laid back in the grand scheme of things. 
this is related to each other and in this price category. The sub $100 speaker category is home to all of the bright sounding speakers in my opinion. You'd be hard pressed to find a truly smooth sounding, laid back, relaxed speaker in that price category. It's not what most people want in that price category so nobody really makes them like that. But I digress. So we've covered the top end, let's get into the mid range now. Um, the mid range on the Mica MB42X is going to have some peaks almost to give an artificial sense of loudness. The mid range on the Dayton B652 Air is also going to have some peaks, but in a way that boosts vocal performance and lets the vocals kind of be separate from the music a little bit. And that's both a good thing and a bad thing. It's good because vocals really pop. It's bad because it does kind of show you in contrast that like the music itself is not going to be as good because the vocal has like a good shot, like a light shining on it. And the rest of the music can sound a little bit congested in comparison. The MB42X never sounds congested on the other hand, um, but its vocals don't pop out either. The Polk T15 is a bit of an interesting one here. So, and this is where I really hope you watch the review for all three of these independently because this was designed to be listened to off vertical access, meaning if you have a space restriction or you can't afford speaker stands or whatever, and you're someone who's most likely going to buy speakers and just maybe put them down low on your media console, or perhaps you're going to mount them up high closer to TV height where, you know, the speaker's here and your ears down here and you're not ear to tweeter level. These are designed for that. So on access, if the, your ear is in line with the tweeter mid range on these, it's going to go down. It's going to take a big kind of just like sync. It, it's almost going to be somewhat absent. Vocals are going to sound like they're really far back. Um, there's not going to be much body to the music. But if you set these up correctly, meaning they're either higher or lower than your ears are, meaning down low on a console or up high on the wall, for example, then the mid range is actually going to sound quite good. It's not going to be boosted really in any way. It's going to be mostly neutral. Vocals aren't going to pop out. Nothing's going to sound congested or open either. Um, there will be, I would say, still a slight dip. Um, it is kind of that, like that consumer level, you know, a little bit V curve that we see in this category. It, that's going to be there a little bit still, but it's not going to just fall off a cliff like it would at ear height. Um, let's see if there's anything else to talk about in the mid range here. And just so we're clear, the B650, B652 Air is not a congested sounded speaker uh, generally, only when compared to the MB42X, because the MB42X is a really open sounding speaker. It's kind of shocking how open it sounds for how small it is. And I really didn't think this one would be the soundstage champion compared to these three. I thought it would be this one, honestly, but it ended up being the Mica. Um, it's the smallest, but it, it just kind of does something really magical with that soundstage. Um, so we talked about top end, we talked about the mid range. Um, let's talk about bass. So th this was kind of surprising. Biggest woofer, right? Six and a half. Middle size woofer, five and a quarter. Smallest woofer, four inch. Now, you're going to want tone controls or DSP regardless of which one of these three you pick. So without tone controls, this has the least amount of bass. These two are kind of like similar. Yeah, I would say they're similar enough. Neither one really sticks out or has very good bass without tone controls. But with tone controls or DSP, believe it or not, the mica is going to take the cake. And I'm going to tell you why. So with the micas, you can add, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, even eight decibels of bass boost to these. They maintain their quality and just produce more quantity of bass. So much so that it's almost like you're looking at them and you're like, wow, that, that's really these little speakers producing all this bass. It's, it's quite impressive. Now, the Dayton Audio, on the other hand, being a sealed unit, you know, more than two or three decibels, and it's not going to really reward you anymore. Adding more than two or three decibels of bass boost to these via equalizer or DSP just made them sound even more congested. It's, I didn't want to keep going, and the reward wasn't good, very good either. The Polk T15s were somewhat similar. While they didn't get congested when I added bass boost, um, adding, again, more than two or three decibels of bass to these... The, you reach a point of diminishing return where they stopped giving you more bass and just started to sound a little bit boomy. Whereas the Micas, like I said, six, seven, eight dB of bass more, 
and they just sounded better. It didn't like bleed up into the mid range. It didn't sound bloated. It didn't sound boomy. It was like boosting that like really low frequency bass and it really delivered in that area, which surprised the hell out of me because like four inch woofer is the smallest cabinet. It's the smallest woofer. Um, I don't know what makes it do that. I don't know. It's like the port tuning or what. Uh, this one's front ported. So I think that's what stops this one from giving you more bass when you, no matter what you do with the tone controls, because it can't take advantage of like that back wall. This is sealed, so I don't think it could do it either, obviously. So I think it's, you know, maybe the port tuning and the fact that it's a rear firing port. So that's it for the bass. The mica takes the cake there. So overall, the mica is going to take the cake for, um, and by the way, if, if, you know, English isn't your primary language, when I say take the cake, it means it's like the best in this area. So um, the mic is going to be the best in a few areas. Um, imaging, soundstage is going to be the largest, and it can produce the most bass if you don't mind turning up your tone controls. In those areas, phenomenal. I'd say in the looks department, they're all fairly similar. I prefer the look of the mica um, the most, I would say, um, but I didn't hate the look of the other two either. The Dayton B652 Air, where this is going to shine, is it's going to be the most natural sounding of the three. This is on the brighter side and sharp sounding. This is on the brighter sound, not sharp sharp sounding, but then the mid-range takes a dip. This is tonally probably the most accurate speaker. I enjoyed listening to this quite a bit. This one is more my taste. Even though this one's a lot better in quite a few areas, this more suits my taste in music. It's a little bit laid back sounding in comparison. The top end's a little bit smoother. Yes, it's not as detailed, but I'm okay with that. I can listen to it for a little bit longer. Um, the mid-range is also a little bit better than the other two. The bass, uh, you know, not so good. Um, yeah, looking on the back here to see. Uh, yeah, these two have the uh, uh, keyhole mounts to be wall-mounted. This one does not. So where these are going to shine the most is going to be the build quality. These definitely went in that category. Um, another thing is going to be, oh, let's see, what else are these things good at? It might just be that, guys. Um, these, because you can wall mount these two also. Um, I guess, you know, if you're going to have that vertical off-axis response scenario where you're going to have your speaker be lower or higher than your listening position, these are probably going to sound better than those two in that kind of scenario since they were designed for that. Um... So yeah, this is how they compare with each other, okay? I, I'll get into the sound signature just like a little bit, but I don't think that's as important in this category because we are dealing with three pretty good pairs of speakers. So these are going to be like bright, lively, sharp, open, clear sounding speakers that can have really good bass if you turn up the, the bass response. Super neutral sounding, a little bit warm in comparison to the other two, a little bit more body and soul to the music. Uh, really has that like old school sound to them. Uh, and these are, I, I just, I got to say it, I think they're just more like for home theater, you know what I mean? TV duty, movies, rear surround sound, stuff like that. Um, they are going to be on the cooler side of neutral and a little bit dry sounding when using them for music only. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments below. These little trio reviews are quite difficult to do and it's hard to cover everything. I've done my best and I think I've covered the most relevant things. If I were to pick one for myself, um, I'll be honest, I'd probably go with the Micah B6, uh, oh, really mashing up the names here, Micah MB42Xs. And the reason is, even though this one suits my listening style more, the reason I'd pick the Micahs is because I can turn down the treble with the tone controls to make it closer to what I enjoy, and I could pump up the bass enough to make them enjoyable. Because I'm guessing if you're in this category, like a subwoofer is maybe not an option right now. And that's why I think I would go with this one. Um, the other two are great also. It just really depends what you're looking for. I will say this, sorry. The Polks probably would make the best party speaker if you like to have a lot of people over, you want to crank your music, play it loud, have a few beers, stuff like that. I think the Polks are going to be the best at that. Um, I think the other two could do it also, but I just think the Polks would be best at that. Something about the way their top end is kind of reminds me of a party. It's the best way I can really say it. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you have any questions, Ask in the comments below. I respond to all your comments. And uh, until next time, later.